Community Connections CBMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrate local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections Hello and happy afternoon to you listeners out there, Waterloo Region. It is Friday, the 18th of February at CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Today on the show, we have James Blacktop and the boys and I. We have them all on the web conference. Say hi, guys. Hey, there. And we'll be chatting with them in just a few minutes. We're going to start off with a song that they recorded back in the studio in 2019. That was That Ain't Me Anymore from James Blacktop and the Boys and I. Not sure if there's a way to, to kind of fix it, but there's a really big uh, uh, echo. Head call. 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 That's James Blacktop and the boys and I who were in the studio with us back in 2019. 
long time ago. Hi, James. Welcome back to CKMS Community Connections. So just a reminder that if you're on mute, you've got to unmute yourself uh, in order to get yourself on the radio. <laughs> of course. Why, why wouldn't I? You know, <laughs> I, I should be used to all this Zoom nonsense by now. Yeah, yeah. Different uh, software, you know, new rules. How are you doing, James? Yeah. Oh, absolutely wonderful. We've been uh, quite busy. I uh, got to go into the studio back in uh, uh, September and kind of November uh, to record a five song EP that will be coming out next month called Ignite. Um, and it was fantastic. We got to go up to a place called uh, Chalet Studios up in Uckbridge. Um, they've recorded like people like Rush, Bare Naked Ladies, uh, Chantal Kraviatsuk, uh, Pursuit of Happiness, a few other few other bands that we absolutely adore and and uh it's just a fantastic experience they certainly got the best out of us that's great did you record a whole album or just just an ep just, just an ep yeah. so we got uh, five new tracks coming out uh, -huh. uh march the 18th uh, the first single off that called white hot uh, got to release today yeah how did that go what 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 do you do to release a a single you, you went to the studio oh, you recorded it yeah. yeah um and then we used um a guy by the name of michael parkinson uh who mixed that ain't me anymore uh initially mm -hmm. and siegfried meyer who uh mastered that ain't me anymore before so we had uh, good relationships with them and they they mixed and mastered the, the whole ep and then there's this whole other world that i'm still kind of learning online of of how to, you know, go about releasing all of that stuff to, um, uh, like, it's like streaming services and all that. And, uh, last year I was able to get into contact with a couple people through, uh, Canadian music week and, and uh, Eric Alper, uh, is actually going to be doing all the PR work, uh, as far as promoting it to, uh, various radio stations and, and all that fun stuff and hopefully keeping us quite busy in the fall, coming months. So largely, you're just handing it off and um, letting the distributors and, and the promotion people take care of it for you. Yeah, like I, we were able to do a fair amount, um, certainly better than I expected with That Ain't Me Anymore, but it was in the hands of an idiot. Um, you know, not maybe not an idiot, but, you know, I don't exactly know what I'm doing on, on, that, on that aspect of things. Yeah. I know how to pick up a guitar and write a melody and, and kind of um, put a song together, but the... Uh, the other aspect of it is, is just absolutely bonkers to me. Yeah, that's what I've heard before. You know, do what you can and buy what you can't. So that's uh, exactly. Yeah, you got uh, the experts doing the things that they're good at. Got a bunch exactly. of experts in the room with you. Um, do you want to introduce your band? Yeah, absolutely. I believe Mark is here as well. I don't see him on the chat, but I think he's here. And uh, our lead guitarist and, and Adam, our uh, bassist, is, is on the call with us. Yeah. Right, boys. I'm happy to be here. Glad to be here. Good to have you back, Woo! Mark. And, and you too, Adam. Yeah. Good to see you both music again. It's still happening. That's yeah, what we're looking for. Yeah. We're looking for to make sure music still happens, right? Yeah. Even with the lockdown, to make sure that, uh, well, we're pretty excited for the live music scene. That's what I think we're most excited about right now. Yeah. It's getting back to playing oh, live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been a, a good opportunity to, to sit back and, and get some recording done, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. <laughs> what yeah. what have you tonight's been... tonight's gonna be good tonight's the, the for the i mean live show full capacity finally at the bars and stuff like okay. that like that's that's what it's about where are you playing like uh, tonight at descendants this descendants brewery on this victoria i'm pretty sure yeah victoria near lancaster right? yeah. yeah 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 and uh are they um reservations has it uh, been sold out or is it uh Come uh, as you want and, uh, you know, dress Come as you are, I believe. No cover or anything like that. I oh, think it's cool. just people were trying to celebrate the fact that um, the restrictions have been lifted, right? That, that full capacity is available. Yeah. So yeah. Just we're just trying to have a good night tonight and have a good party. So, Exactly. Exactly. And, of course, you'll be playing all the hits. Yeah. All, all, all of our. You said you had an EP coming out. What? Yeah. What? other tracks you've got white hot on the white hot which I'd, I'd never heard before actually it's uh, a new song to me so uh, sounds really great and we'll be getting to that you know, I, I promise our listeners that uh, we'll have uh, white hot featured 
closer to the end of the show. What uh, what other songs have you got on there? Stuff that I might have heard before? Um, there's one that you would have heard before um, that Mark wrote uh, called Book of Count of Sorrows. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was something that was kind of born out of the uh, the early days of the pandemic where we were just kind of sort of sending each other ideas um, that we came up with at home um, online. And Mark had put together this riff um, that just, I don't know, like when he plays, I'm like a dog that like, you know, just hears the right pitch of whistle. And, and on that, and I heard that riff and I'm like, oh, this is something I can really dig my teeth into sort of thing. And, and I played in it, I played it acoustically uh, the last um and it was just that that feeling of sadness and depression that came from you know us finding out that our, all of our gigs for the next six months were going to be canceled and 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 all this stuff and it was just like a, a lonely place and and that riff just kind of put it all together for me. Yeah, it's something that you actually uh, let us listen to. You got a, a quick taste of it back in uh, what August of last year or so. Um, when I've yeah. listened, when I've listened to it now. The studio recording sure. of Book of Counted Sorrows, which will be surpassed uh, in, in all ways on the uh, forthcoming EP. Book of Counted Sorrows by The Boys and I. Follow, but too scared to walk alone. So I write another 
chapter in this tale of faded dreams Happily ever after isn't part of it for me Every twist and tragedy, every memory of verse In this book of countless sorrows I've been the author of Counted Sorrows, James Blacktop in the CKMS studios back in August of 2020. Got James in the studio, uh, James on the web conference, Adam Postman on the web conference, and Mark Riley on the web conference. Welcome, gentlemen, to CKMS Community Connections. Again, thank you for having us. So, Mark, this came out of your... Um, dealings with the pandemic. This is a, a pandemic song. Well, as far as the lyrics are concerned, that's James's department because uh, he's much better with words than I am. But uh, I, I was just I, I was just playing around with a certain riff, and it was in a minor key, and I thought, hey, that sounds really sad, and it's kind of fitting for the uh, for the pandemic and how we're all feeling, uh, especially after you know leading into uh, the end of March 2020, we had uh, numerous shows lined up, and things were looking good, and I'm thinking, yeah. 2020 is going to be good and then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out from under us and yeah. uh, like everybody else and uh, yeah it just led to a really sad sounding riff with a really interesting kind of chord progression and as per the usual um, I throw it at James and he does something with it he throws it back and I do something with it and okay. he puts some lyrics on it and lo and behold we have a song so it, it really is a very collaborative e effort absolutely all right absolutely and when you're doing this, um, this was during the pandemic, during the lockout, when you know people weren't supposed to be gathering together. Was this all done remotely? Were you uh, working together in person over uh, uh, you know coffee and pizza, yeah, was, or were you doing this sending, separately, sending music back and forth? And uh, yeah, like I would record something on my phone and send it to him, and then he'd listen to it and uh, you know and let the, the let the words come to him, or or uh, you know he'd he'd have some some change he wants to change a key or change a note or change this change that and we just yeah revise it and try it again and all the while it being somewhat virtual and then at one point we did start uh, jamming out together and um in person but it was it was like from across the room kind of thing um at the time where i was living we uh, it was a nice big room so we stayed we stayed Socially distant, of course, but uh, okay. yeah, it's kind of hard to do that without without any kind of uh, in-person uh, interaction. Yeah, well, but we do what we can remotely. It came out sounding really, really good. You know, that was uh, James by himself in the uh, in the studio. Uh, I'll bet with the full band backing up um, and some professional production, unlike uh, the, uh, the the one or two mics to, uh, set up that we had in the record in the broadcast studio. It's just going to sound terrific. Oh, it does. It's it's nice and polished. It sounds great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing it again on hearing it again elsewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, do you expect to to dribble these out uh, in bits and pieces, or after White Hot has been out for a while, do you uh, want to put out the entire EP? Oh yeah. So the 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 full EP comes out on on March the 18th, and um, so the the remaining four songs will come out uh, on March the 18th, and. As far as we know, Book of Counted Sorrows will actually be the next one that, that comes out on its own as a, as a single, um, but probably on the same date as the, uh, the EP, because it's probably one of the, the strongest ones we've got. And already have like a, a lyric video and stuff that have gotten made up for it. So it's, it's, it's probably, the rest are all going to come out at once, but uh, okay. Book of Counted Sorrows will be the standout one. All right. And that's the single off the EP or is White Hot? The single off the EP. White Hot's the White Hot's the first one. Book of Counted Sorrows will be the second. Okay, so you're getting two singles out of the deal. Excellent, excellent. An A side and a B side on your 45. Hopefully they're all safe. <laughs> I guess they don't do 45s anymore, do they? Not so much. No, no. We are uh, we're missing somebody on the web conference. Uh, you've got a drummer in uh, 
in the band? Yes, we do. And he is, uh, like, we're all at work right now, but he's the one that cannot get away uh, um, to, to, to do what we do. Yeah, that's, that's the, um, the day job interfering with the passion and, and the real work. Right? Kind of not fair. Yeah, really. <laughs> so on, on the EP, we've got uh, Book of Counted Sorrows, which is kind of pandemic related. Uh, did any of the other songs come out as a result of the, the woes that the pandemic has brought you? Um, I don't think so. Um, the rest, uh, I've been fortunate enough, like Mark and I wrote uh, in yesterday together. I came with some lyrics and he added the chords to it. And the uh, the other three I kind of came into the band with. I think I wrote um, Lay Down Easy mm -hmm. um, while we were in the band. Um, but Old Fashioned Kind of Love is something that I wrote in my naivety or I can never pronounce that word properly. <laughs> um, when I was naive <laughs> in, in my early 20s, um, I wrote that back in 2008 when I was living in Vancouver and I just had these lyrics sitting there for for a decade and finally I was going through some old binders and, and went at it and, and uh, finally the, the music kind of clicked with what I was uh, what I had written already and brought it to the band and, and Adam was like, that's the song. Um, and it's just kind of a, a cutesy little sort of love song, but, uh, um, yeah. yeah we've been playing it here on the station. Long story on short, book, of, book account of source, probably the most recent of all the songs on the, on the well, album. When, when James played, uh, old fashioned kind of love for me, I remember thinking like, no, this is the, especially after recorded is reinforced. I, my idea was, I was like, wow, this seems like the kind of song that I would hear on a patio in the summer at one of those places that sells four, you know, four Coronas in a bucket and you're just out there and it's a hot day. It's just what I imagined the song to be. It would be yeah. on the radio while you did that. That was just in my head. Yeah. So, um, and that's Lay Down Easy. No, that was, uh, that was yeah. um, Old Fashioned Kind of oh, Love. Old Fashioned Kind of Love. Yeah. That's, that's one I haven't yeah. heard yet. So, uh, something for me to look forward yeah. to. Yeah. 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 No, we're, we're looking forward to getting them out too, right? I mean, there's, yeah. there's a bit of a flavor a flavor menagerie? No, I don't know what you want to call it. That's in the EP, right? A bit of, bit of everything going on. So Yeah. yeah. James played uh, Laid on Easy for us uh, back in the 2020, the, the second suit of it. This is, by the way, your, your third appearance on CKMS Community Connections. I think you've just set the record for um, the band most frequently on the show. So good, good to have you here, guys. This is, this is great. Um, but Laid on Easy is something that we've been playing on the station every once in a while. It's a recording that uh, we made in the studio again. Let's have a listen to that. That's uh, James Blacktop in the studio back in 2020. We stumbled to our room, fall against the door. Leaning for a kiss, I can't resist no more. You said that it was over, baby, I agree.
if only for tonight we'll pretend to forget about the words and the hurt that we're both feeling one more last time tonight yeah we lay down easy to what we do best if only for Lay Down Easy, James Blacktop in the CKMS studio back in 2020. James and Mark and Adam from The Boys and I are all on our web conference here on CKMS Community Connections on this February, Friday, the 18th of February. What made you release a, a song in the middle of winter? That's not a, a poor time to get people to come out. Oh, you're kind of cutting out there. Uh just wondering what, what made you decide so to release think, a song in, in, a, in February when the, the cold and the snow are out there. It's, it's hardly the time of uh, year when you think uh, of white hot stuff. <laughs> I think it's freezing out, so everybody needs a little bit of white hot in their life in the middle of winter for those who mm -hmm. can't travel down south. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with marketing, if, if we really boil it down to it, is that um, there's a lot of stuff coming up and so that we need to kind of be ready for come spring and the summer, hopefully. Um, and so putting out new material as early as possible, um, potentially gives us a, a better chance at some of those, uh, opportunities coming out the pipeline when, when things kind of open up this summer. Yeah. So I guess releasing the, the singles during the shutdown though, when things are slow gives you builds yeah. up an audience uh, for when the uh, the live shows start up again. Amen. Yeah. And you've got a live show tonight at Descendants, uh, Victoria by, by yeah. Lancaster. So no cover. Everybody should come out. At what time does it start? Oh. What time do you go on? What what uh, time does the performance Just start? Just because he's cutting out, I'm going to pop in here and yeah, say go we go on at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. So we're playing from 8 to 10. All right. Eight to ten. Excellent. Two hours of the boys and I at the Descendants tonight, February the eighteenth, twenty twenty-two. Oh yeah, and plenty more coming up too. Plenty more. Tell me about it. What what other shows have have you got coming up in the future? Uh, in the future, uh, tomorrow night at uh, um, the Dickens in Burlington. Um, I think. Two weeks after that, uh, the Sly Fox in Burlington. Uh, March 18th, we come back to Kitchener uh, to play Descendants again. Um, on the or sorry, March 19th, we play there uh, to celebrate the the release of the EP. Um, back in Stony Creek again in April, and I think that's as far out as we've gotten. But and then there's a few other gigs in there somewhere. So I apologize if I'm leaving out any particular bar. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, I think about six or seven things coming up between now and April. Check that Facebook page. James is pretty diligent at making uh, sure they end up on Facebook. What's your Facebook page? Yeah, I think I've still, uh, yeah. the boys and I band. Boys and I band on Facebook. We'll have a link to that on the show notes, radiowaterloo.ca slash CCC. Scroll down to the list of recent episodes, um, and you can see this episode with the boys and I, and the two previous episodes we've done it well with all their online information right on the uh, show notes page. How far do you travel? Uh, you're saying you're, you're going to Burlington. I've seen you play in Brantford. Um, how big is your circuit? Oh, yeah. Brent. Um, de depends. Um, like, I think the furthest we've gone, if, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think was Welland. Um, we, we played out there in the summer uh, once. Uh, so that was, that was a couple hour drive, just the other side of like St. Catharines. Um, maybe like Oshawa we did. 
uh, early on. Um, but yeah, I'm willing to travel a lot further for the right gig, but, uh, you know, as far as the, uh, the bar scene and, and stuff like that, uh, we usually keep it within about an hour and a half sort of driving range. Okay. And I imagine that usually going much further than that eats up all the profits you make during the show itself. So that's, that's not, yeah, not, uh, financially feasible to, to go much further, but bands do yeah. do tours. Is there something like that in your future? We believe so. There's been two years in a row um, that we've supposed to, supposedly um, been uh, going out on uh, something called the Extreme Tour, um, and they they're a festival organizer and they put on uh, shows throughout the United States and Europe and, and Canada and this and that. And, and they they found us actually um, and asked us to to come join the tour and. And it just so happens that through 2020 and tw they asked us late in, in 2019 to go out on the road with them. Um, and, <laughs> and then 2020 happened and 2021, I think they still ran a U.S. tour in, in 2020 because there were a lot of outdoor venues. But the, the way the border closure was for, for us at that point, there was no, no sort of crossing. So f fingers crossed, uh, we'll be out on the road um, th this summer at some point. Uh, to do some dates uh, in the states with them, at least. Okay, that'll be cool. As uh, get you some more exposure out there, sell some more records, you know, get some more streaming happening. Speaking of streaming, there's uh, this big mm -hmm. controversy with uh, with Spotify recently. Um, oh yeah, are the revenues really there from streaming? Is streaming even worthwhile to uh, to make a push at? No, not as a revenue stream, definitely. Um, but uh, but certainly um, to to get our songs out there so that more people can hear them, it's it's good because you know the more people that can hear us, the more often we're able to play gigs. Um, but as far as payment goes, it's negligible. I think if I've got my numbers correct, um, we've got about sixty thousand, sixty one thousand streams so far. Of that ain't me anymore on Spotify, and that equates to about a hundred dollars of revenue for for the band. So it's it's less than a penny um, yeah. a stream. And you, you're on some of the other platforms as well. Um, I got some of your stuff from Bandcamp or SoundCloud. Um, some, yeah, some of your early stuff, which you know I'm quite willing to play if you're willing to listen to it. Um, yeah, and I also. I, I, I don't know if it would translate on the phone as well, but I did bring my guitar just in case. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, if you want to, if you want to fire off something on the guitar. I'm not sure that the bandwidth is up to it, and they're certainly not going to get any quality sound out of it. Um, what I'll, new I'll things give it a, have you got? I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I promised my uh, my fiance to be that I would I would play it for her on the radio today. Uh, it's something I wrote for her, um, and uh, it's going to end up being where you have to go into the studio and record it in the next four months because um, she and I will be getting married in, in July. Um, and this is going to be the first song that we dance to at our wedding. It's called the Here I Stand. Congratulations to you and, and oh, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess here goes nothing. Um. Thank you. 
Something like that. I don't know how that came through through a phone speaker, but that was for you, Stephanie. A love story right here on the radio. How's James <laughs> Blacktop singing to his fiance Stephanie? When are you getting married, James? Uh, July the second. July the second. Oh, the day after Canada Day, so it's going to be yeah. big holiday yeah, weekend. Thanks. Yeah, it wasn't the intention. It was supposed to be in uh, in September of 2021, but. Uh, got pushed back for, for obvious reasons, yeah. but, uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to marrying her for one, but also looking forward to finally getting on a flight again, um, after all these restrictions and, and heading to Europe for a couple of weeks to, uh, -huh. just, I don't know, get, get to be together without the kids for a couple of weeks. Sounds like, sounds like a honeymoon. Everybody deserves. Absolutely. That. Congratulations Amen. James and Stephanie. Thank you. Planning on doing any gigs while you're out in Europe? Busking on the streets, perhaps, <laughs> if nothing else? <laughs> um, like, you know, Stephanie is very nice and very patient and very forgiving. I don't know how much she would, you know, she lets me go every weekend to, <laughs> to, to, go, to go play in bars until the middle of the night. But uh, I don't know how well she would take to me bagging off our honeymoon to, to go play gigs. Uh, <laughs> I might just uh, wait until we get home for that. Yeah, <laughs> probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be a bit of a, a gap in performances during the summer, uh, which means that uh, you've got to catch the boys and I while you can until uh, <laughs> yep. until James comes back. So a few weeks, you said, so back at uh, back by August or so, and uh, t two weeks, and and uh, you know, well, you know, I, I'm uh, a bit of a workaholic as far as the the band goes sure yep. surely enough you know we'll have a gig the day after i get back from my honeymoon <laughs> waste no time absolutely oh yeah like it it's funny and she's probably gonna you know um give me some words about it when i get home too but i'm like i'm, I'm willing to play on canada day like the day before our wedding if, if need be right it's as, as long as as long as those two weeks are are just her and i right it's uh, you got to get the gigs while you can, right? It's uh, yeah. yeah. How about I'm, you? I'm a bit of a crazy man there. Yeah. How about you, uh, Mark and Adam? Um, happily married or about to be? Have you written any songs um, to your uh, to your loved ones? 
that's that's <laughs> not my department that's for sure um yeah i'm, I'm not going to say anything more than that <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, how, there's... how many heavy metal song heavy metal love songs do you know mark i don't know yeah uh, zero <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the love love shines in in many different ways, you know. Those of us who uh, have no musical ability are uh, kind of stuck to buying flowers and chocolates, and that's about the size of it. <laughs> right. What was the uh, the studio experience like? You uh, you did um, uh, a single what back in twenty twenty that um, that ain't me anymore. You released that what? Yeah. August or so, and um, yeah. Was it the same studio? No, um, we had recorded uh, that ain't me anymore at a place called uh, Catbox in Cambridge, which uh, unfortunately the pandemic kind of ate. I, I guess you would call it like it. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but in, in it was a totally different experience in that um, when when we had Michael um, as our engineer there. I, that was ba I didn't really quite know the difference um, between an engineer and a producer. And so he engineered the album and, and recorded us and stuff. But as far as, you know, giving us feedback as, as to how we should play something or, um, you know, how the song structure could work and stuff like that, that aspect um, wasn't necessarily there. Um, when we recorded at Chalet, it was different in that we had a, a, a producer um, to kind of nitpick every note that we ever played. And, and, and it was, it was good, right. And that, um, you know, we came in, um, you know, even on some of my guitar parts, which are usually pretty background, um, you know, he's like, well, you're strumming it this way. Try strumming it this way. Like your, your pattern is just, you're, uh, you're, you're sounds chum, chicka, chum, chicka, chum, and it should be chum, chicka, chum, chicka, chum. And it's, uh, you know, just silly stuff like that, that we never would have really, um, considered. Right. Um, and you know, ev everything was kind of nitpicked, but at the same time, I feel like he got the absolute best out of all of us. Um, you know, Nathan's drumming is, is, is really tight. I, I, I'm brimming with anticipation for the world to hear Mark's guitar solo on Book of Counted Sorrows because it's just, it's something, yeah. it's next level. And like, yeah, so he got the best out of us. I don't know. Yeah, so it worked out for you because I can see that as a, a musician, having somebody pick apart, uh, you know, your work of passion uh, can be pretty devastating. It can be, and it, it's tough, right? Is that, um, you know, I had to go into it um, and kind of set ego aside. Cause I always kind of come at it where it's like, well, this is my baby. Like, why are you telling me my baby's not perfect? And, uh, <laughs> uh right. It's like, it'd be like telling one of my kids, well, your face isn't quite right. It needs to, you know, it needs to change. Yeah, um, yeah. and so I, I think a lot of it was just trying to get my ego out of the way. Right. And, and take somebody that, uh, you know, has recorded all these bands that I look up to, um, and, and take his input as like, Hey, maybe this guy like knows what he's talking about. And so has that affected your live performances as well? Oh yeah, definitely. Like we, we played the song, um, you know, we played the songs in a certain way, um, prior to, and now like we play it, you know, kind of note for note as we recorded it in the studio, which is, is, um, you know, obviously better and, and more consistent. Um, but other than that, yeah. Yeah. How, how's the um, audience reception to that been? Do they see the change in style as uh, you've been in, uh, in and out of the studio? And are they, th th does the audience appreciate hmm. the change in style? I don't know. There, there was, it, it's funny because Book Account at Soros, I always go back to, and that was the one that changed the most, um, is that the riff that I wrote the song around is barely existent in the, in the actual finished product because as he pointed out to us, he's like, this riff actually kind of sounds similar to this song you, and it, you might want to change it. And so we slipped it in uh, during Mark's guitar solo a little bit, but it's not like the, the main riff in the song anymore. Um, but when we play it live, we, we call it the OG version. Um, that, cause that riff has it, got like a certain some je ne sais quoi to it. And like, there's times where we'll just let Mark play that riff for a while. And just, just him doing that gets the crowd going, right? Is that, 
Um, I don't know, it's, it's just one of those ones, like I always picture it as that's Mark's sweet child of mine riff, right? Like it's, it's, it's instantly recognizable. Yeah, yeah. And so we always play it the old school way when we play it live. And that was the inspiration for the whole song in the first place. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So I can see uh, I can see you wanting to retain at least that. Be uh, interested yeah. to, to do some um, comparisons at some point. You know, we've got the studio recording of Book of Counted Sorrows. I, I can hardly wait to play them back to back when the uh, single gets released. <laughs> oh yeah, no. it, it's some it's something else. Like it's uh, I don't know. It, it's a it's a weird thing too. And I've always um, really enjoyed doing harmony parts and, and things like that. And I was really lucky in the studio that. Uh, um, we, we were in there for a couple of days straight um, recording all the um, the bass and the drums and, and a, a little bit of the rhythm guitar stuff. And then Mark and I went back, just the two of us, uh, about a month later um, and did his lead stuff and, and, uh, and my vocals. And um, that month gave me that time to just kind of sit with the songs and kind of ruminate on, on every melody that I had already written and 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 just kind of nail out harmony parts um on, on all five of the songs actually um and it, it was a weird compliment that i've never gotten from a producer before but he's like you know if, if singers came in as prepared as you i wouldn't mind recording vocals and i think feel like that was a pretty high compliment coming from huh. from him are you the only vocalist in the band or um do um adam and mark uh, join in, in this sometimes in, in the studio, yes, live, um, Adam and, and Mark, uh, Adam and Mark join. Um, I, I really enjoy, uh, we've been doing a cover of The Wait by the band um, in, our, in our live sets recently, and, and their harmonies in that chorus are just, are, they're just spot on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how long before you get background vocalists joining the band? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You need somebody to go do, 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 do in the background there, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny. I, I sent um, one of the tracks in yesterday to, to a friend of mine, and, and her feedback on it actually was that, was that there's a little breakdown spot in the middle of the song. And she said, you know, the only thing I could really, you know, hear that's not there is maybe like, you know, a background Thing where you know you sing it and then you know you got a couple of girls singing an echo part of that right after i'm like well it's kind of too little too late now but um but you know maybe one day but um you know it's, it's funny when uh when we started this band i you know i'd never really heard mark sing a note which you know um i didn't seem to mind because he's such an amazing guitarist um and um, his girlfriend actually is the one that's kind of more encouraged him to to sing more and more, and, and he's really come into his own with his with his voice, um, you know, in our live set. So I don't even know if we would need a backup singer. I got I got a Mark and an Adam, and they're fantastic. <laughs> Who needs anybody else? So your new single is White Hot, which came out at what eleven o'clock this morning. Was the official drop dead date? Like I think so. the The video came out on YouTube at at nine o'clock this morning. Um, but I think as far as Spotify goes, it just it dropped at midnight, at, or yeah. you know, eleven fifty nine, not fifty nine seconds last night. Um, however, they kind of work it, so it, it came online sometime in the middle of the night. And so, so when this happens, do you sit there and watch Spotify and refresh, 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 refresh to see how the counts are going up? Um. <laughs> Today, yes, not not usually so, <laughs> so yeah. not so uh, uh, obsessively normally, um, yeah. but certainly didn't do that at midnight. You know, I was uh, I was long in bed before <laughs> before that happened. I expect what resting up for tonight's show, making sure that the voice is all taken care of. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, the voice is well taken care of now because I I quit smoking eleven days ago and Ooh. and I just. My range has just, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what it does. Cause like back to back, like we were playing tonight and tomorrow night and uh, normally back to back shows were just like a voice killer. Um, and, and now like, I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do, um, you know, this weekend. Cause I got about five hours this thing to do over the course of the weekend. And, and I, I feel like it's a lot better now just after not smoking. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to change 
the performance, if that's going to change the way that you write songs to accommodate the new range in your voice? Oh, I certainly hope so. You know, I've got this dream of, of having like the range of like Steven Tyler or Axl Rose. Mm. Um, and so if I, if I can get back to singing some of those songs and stuff, like our repertoire will just boom. Um, cause I'll be able to do a lot more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What led up to white hot? What's, what was the inspiration? Oh, it's it, oddly enough. Um, I wrote that song in a gazebo out in Thamesville um, back in 2017. I actually wrote it within a day of writing that ain't me anymore. It was just a, a time where I was just, I don't know, just really inspired. Um, but I just kind of wanted to write a, a raunchy love song. I don't like, I kind of just, uh, I don't know, just a, a sexy, flirty kind of tongue-in-cheek song about a girl, and and uh, I was listening to a lot of Black Crows at the time, which I think kind of comes out in the uh, the recording. But uh, yeah, I don't know if there was a lot of inspiration. It was just I, I set out like I want to write like a kind of anthematic rock song, and that's just kind of what came out. I don't know. Hmm. And when you wrote it, was it a collaborative effort or? entirely james blacktop no i'll let adam feel this one because uh, he's always <laughs> i i i didn't like the song when i wrote it right is that I, i'm very limited in what i can do with a guitar and i i had posted a video of it on youtube like when i first wrote it and it doesn't translate very well as like an acoustic singer songwriter song right yeah and i brought it to the band thinking it was trash and i'll let adam take it from there yeah no this was this is a song Again, much like Book of our old fashioned kind of love, I knew from the first time I heard this song, I was like, nope, this song's a banger. This song is a good song. We needed, I'm not saying it didn't need, like, you know, we needed all the different parts put together. Like, there's, there's some distinct bass lines and some distinct, uh, you know, lead guitar work that goes on and stuff like that that makes the song what it is. But yeah, it's a, which is, it's fair, right? That's always hard to play uh, or to, you know, I always, when I, when I write myself personally, I, I write a lot on acoustic guitar and it's very difficult to write, I find, to go from an acoustic guitar just to write a rock song. But James was able to come in with this and it was ready. Like he just had this, the starting feel of it. It's like, oh, oh no, that feel is good feel. We can take that feel and we can do something with it. And I think it was, he, he had a skepticism even for a long time too. And I think we finally convinced him after that first, uh, you know, after we got some feedback from that producer, you know, when we when we had looked for the producer in the studio and he said, nope, nope, this is this is one of your better ones. You should consider this one when we were going through the list and being like, what songs are we going to send to him as scratch tracks to listen to? Uh, and then when it came out, it was just like universally was like, guys, we know what our single is. Like, this is clearly the single. There's no questions about this. Like, there's no debate. There's no nothing. So it has a, a terrific opening to it you know a nice sharp uh, good opening and and this th that kind of stuff is just great for the radio because it just punches right in there yeah, yeah and I, I, do. I heard it as the theme music to the wide world of motorsports it's a uh, podcast it that is, we occasionally yeah. play here on uh, on wr podcasts uh, friday mornings and uh, this past episode had white hot as the th uh, background theme music for uh, for wide world of motorsports so, yeah, it just it worked really well. James Jordan, uh, one of the guys that does the podcast, um, had messaged me on Facebook, and I, I believe he used to work on Community Connections. I think yeah. that's how we knew each other, or something. Like. One of our colleagues, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, and he had asked me like I, I had been promoting a lot of stuff with the band. He's like, do you have anything that would like go well with this? Like something that's like upbeat rock almost kind of southern bluesy and i'm like i got this and i sent him like a 20 second clip of just like mark's guitar solo and he's like that's the one yeah. can you get me a version that doesn't have your vocals and i'm like oh great okay like, <laughs> like, like, this is all i do can we take all your singing out of it and i'll just use <laughs> the guitars and the drums and so I, I contacted the, the guy that did the mixing for us and I asked him, I'm like, can I get another cut of this with like all my background vocals mm -hmm. and lead vocals just kind of washed out of there and, and he and he sent it to us and but and I'm really happy with it because like you don't want <laughs> vocals really in a, in a theme music yeah, exactly. and I'm, I'm really happy with what he did yeah. with it. It's really cool. It's white hot the karaoke edition. 
<laughs> right. Okay. Oh, I think we should man. have a listen to that. Um, we're getting close to the top of the hour here, and uh, we certainly don't want to miss out on uh, White Hot, the new single by James Blacktop and the boys and I. You've got the fire Tidal waves are crashing With that ravenous desire You've got the honey You've got the moves you got that something, girl I'm feeling everything you do You're white hot, baby And I'm a monster of the flame You're driving me crazy But I Listening to White Hot by James Blacktop and the boys and I on CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. CKMS Community Connections is sponsored by Radio Waterloo. Its gen- executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Associate producers are Jeff Stager, Dylan Bravener, and Steve Todd, who wrote our theme music as well. But this is White Hot, James Blacktop, and the boys and I. And that is the end of that. All right on. Thanks, Bob. Excellent. I'm sorry I had to talk over that. I started it too late, but the, the background information was just too good to, to give up on. I couldn't, I couldn't shut my mouth. Oh, good. I get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the podcast, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll replace the um, uh, white hot with the vocals over it and, uh, and fix it up. So the podcast is, uh, has got the whole song in um, with, right on. with no uh, talk over. Wonderful seeing you guys again. Uh, hopefully we'll do it again well. in the studio the next time because uh, this setup here is, is you know, only second best at most. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, probably hit you up at some point in March, too, for the release of the EP. Yeah. Um, yeah, do that. Don't know if I'll have you back on the air again. I mean, it's a possibility uh, for half an hour uh, at most, possibly, but... Yes, yeah. when the EP comes out, I uh, want to play that thing all the way through. So, uh, you know, it's uh, like Amen. five songs on there? Yeah. Okay, so we can do that. Right on. All well, right. Thank you again. Bob. See you again Thanks, in March Bob. then. All Hi, right. guys. And uh, I'll, see, I'll see you guys around seven. All right. <laughs> Peace. See you, Mark.